presented by Under Armour and Sleeper Fantasy. Welcome to Light Years. Andy Lou, my son was yelling at me in the fourth <laughs> quarter to put on Miss Rachel. What's uh, that? For those of you who have toddlers, she has a uh, spell on them where she just yell, where she just sings songs and they just want to listen to it. Hmm. And at a certain point during that fourth quarter, I'm like, you know what, bro? You can have the remote. Let's do it. Because I can't watch this anymore. Let's do it. Let's do I'll it. Watch this. I'll watch this on my phone because <laughs> what is the point? What a disgusting. What is the point? Worst, what Worst loss of the season. Oh, this one? This is the one, yeah. Sam? This is the one that gets your uh... – by the way, title of the show, what is the point? Uh, it's our it's – our pot every daily pod uh thing is as we come up with that tagline i just i got nothing for you is this the worst pot loss of the season i don't know only, i say no only because we've seen it so many times but at the same time for you to lose let's let's set it up for you to lose when your guys are rested there's no the way road. there's no way you could name more than four grizzlies players coming into this oh game. gg williams you didn't know him you didn't know you didn't know I, gg jackson a, I, I didn't even know his, i don't even get his name right <laughs> gg jackson you didn't know I, him He's, you know who he is? He's the classic guy you lied to yourself about liking because you read some draft profiles that sounded good. V- I remember Williams. him last year. I remember him last year. I was like, oh, oh, this guy sounds interesting based off of these scouting reports from Draft Express and KOC and whatnot. And then, you know, you watch him play for two minutes. So he sucks. And then, Jason, of course, he Jacob Gilliard. Did you know him? <sighs> I'm a foot taller uh, than Jacob Gilliard. Did you know that? <laughs> and and he looked like he was uh, a combination of uh of Steph Curry and uh and Drew Holiday tonight. That's what he looked like out there. There was another guy uh who who's the, who's the other guy? Uh I I just named him. Vince Williams who looked like prime James Harden. Hell yeah. This was uh this was the Warriors finest attempt at uh losing losing fans tonight. So well done. Well done by the Warriors up and down the roster. Very well done. This was as you said, the worst loss of the season. I will say probably the one that I think will turn off a lot of people to this team. Uh, it'll turn yeah. off, I think, ownership to this team. So I always say I'm optimistic right now because, hey, you lose a game like that, Mike, Dun- Mike Dunleavy's like, well, we can't keep these guys. <laughs> so I'm happy. Right? I'm sitting there. I'm like, well, you know, it, it, because this game happened, Sam, you can't sit here and look anybody in the eye and say, yeah, we're going to keep Wiggins or we're going to keep Kaminga. We're going to keep. No. Those guys, those guys are gone, and good riddance. Oh, I, I wouldn't be so sure, but <laughs> I wouldn't be so sure about the younger guys. Oh, if no. you, were, my biggest fear watching this team tonight mm-hmm. is they're gonna be like, it's over. No. Trade every veteran. Yeah. Let Steph do a victory tour with the young kids. Yeah. I don't. I'm not like they're not really making a case that they can they can make some difference. Yeah. Yeah, I, the way I'm watching it, Kuminga, by the way, looks like very much a third year player. There are moments where you're like, he's getting it. And then there's moments where you're like, he's 21. Does Gigi Jackson look like a third year player to you? <laughs> I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying, I don't want to be an asshole, but I just watch I'm, a team what full is of guys. Trading, that... What does trading Kuminga do for you? Because you're not going to win a title period when your core looks this bad. Yeah. So, I, I mean, doesn't... that's, that's, yeah. that's kind of where I'm getting at with it though. If they can't like, if they look competitive and you're just sitting here going like, man, they just need some vets. But I don't know, man. And I'm not saying I feel this way 100%, but I'm looking at this game and I'm going, who led the team in rebounding? Kuminga. Who was the second leading scorer? Kuminga. Is he the problem? Or is Andrew Wiggins, who played one of his better games? Well, he I can still, go too. I, I still wouldn't say it was good. Um was Clay Clay Thompson? I don't know what's going on there. Oh my like, god! Like all, like all I'm like all I'm saying is, when they play this poorly, they make it very easy for management to be like, we should punt for two to three years down the line, and that's that's my concern level. Uh, just just like putting it out there, I would prefer they not do that because I don't want to watch that. <laughs> Uh, but I don't know how you can watch. Well, I think we both agree on this. They definitely don't look one move away. They don't look like they just need a center. Yeah. And they're, 
go. No. No, they, yeah. they look like they need a lot. <laughs> um, and, and that's kind of where I'm, where I'm just like, man, you're making it easier for manager to punt the season, not harder. Not yeah. harder. Yeah. Jaron Jackson, by the way, tonight went four for 20. It looked like he went four for 20 and it just didn't matter. Desmond Bain's out. Marcus Smart is out. John Moran is out. Uh, that's three guys right there who are out and aren't playing that are their, what, probably their three best players, actually, along with Jaron Jackson. Three of the, three of the four. Yeah. I and mean, it, it just, it didn't matter. It, it, honestly, it, it did not matter. They got completely cooked uh, by guys I've, I've honestly, I've never heard of. Uh, no. I mean, I, I'm a nerd about this sort of stuff. And uh, yeah. You know, you can't even say you can't a loss like this. You can't even say that they're not good enough to win a championship. This is one of those times. I think it's obvious that guys just don't like each other or don't like playing with each other. That's what Mm -hmm. this shows me. Because you just you just don't lose a game like this. Just no, it's it's the interesting thing about this this team Interesting is a uh, mm-hmm. choice word, I guess. Mm-hmm. It's a LeBron team uh, in the sense of, you know, they need to move 50% of these guys, period, yeah. to do anything. But the problem is Steph doesn't really operate like LeBron. He's not like – he's not traditionally been up management's ass about like, I don't give a fuck what future assets you have. Get, make it happen. Get me Rui Hachimura now. You know, like, I don't know, like that sort of stuff. Right. And that's where I'm sitting here Rui going Hachimura. like, man, <laughs> Hey, he was Great good for two up. months. Great he did exactly up. what you expect. He good for two months. They turned back into Rui yeah. Hachimura. <laughs> um, I what, what I was going to say is I, I just, I worry that they're going to get to the trade deadline and be like, this season's over. Let's punt it and go to the off season. Let's get some future assets so we can get to June and do some cool stuff, which just, I don't, I don't, I don't think I don't. about, think about Andy and Sam. Think about how miserable that is for us to have to get on stream three times a week and lie to you about how happy we are and, and all sorts of stuff. So think about Andy and Sam is hilarious. Yeah. A lot of Andy and Sam's at chase center. Uh, these last few years, Joe Lake of that, that luxury tax bill is not going down. Yeah, I guess it could be going down, but um, yeah, and that's, that's the worry. I don't, I don't, this game, I don't think anybody played well, right? I, I, I guess Kaminga had nice numbers, but did you think he, I don't think he really, no, it, well. it, Steph flash, play well. classic flashes game where you're just like, I see the talent, but you watch the game in totality. You're like, yeah, yeah it's that's is is not there by any stretch of the imagination. Is it, which, this isn't Chet Holmgren or something, you know. Which is again, he's not going up against great players. And then you no. talked about Wiggins, Loon, fine, whatever. Sarge, fine, whatever. Draymond, you know, maybe we can talk about him. He came back. He's pretty good. Nice. Yes, so. I would say. Well, I would say if Draymond was healthy and played a full game, they probably win. But I, mean, but I, I like feel like throwing up saying out loud that they needed Draymond to be locked in to beat the zombie Grizzlies, which is kind of the point we're making right now. Yeah. Like that, I mean, you watching Draymond play, he's the second best player on this team. Still true. They can't. They don't. They don't know how to do a single thing on defense without Draymond telling them what to do. It's pretty sad, you know. Um, but again, that speaks to like. Man, the more I watch them, the more I'm like, they're farther away than I thought. Yeah. yeah. Um, did you just say that if Draymond had played the full game, they would have won this game? The sad thing about this team is he played 24 It's such minutes. an embarrassing statement to say out loud. <laughs> well, I'm just, I, I'd, also, I, I'd also probably disagree with you. I mean, do they win this game if he played 33 minutes? That's how bad That's how bad they are. I mean, that's the, how, that's the how Grizzlies The Grizzlies run did come when Draymond and Steph were not on the floor. So sad. But then we get back to the point of your backups should be able to hang with their two-way guys. Because that's that's who it is. Gigi, Gigi Jackson is a two-way guy. Uh, David Roddy is one of those dudes who weird draft accounts on Twitter tweet who's not like a real player, you know? Uh, Gilliard, who, who is he, you know? Vince Williams, these are made-up players. These are made-up, completely made-up players. I, I just – I. I actually don't have the heart to be angry about this game because um, that th- this is it. This is kind of this is kind of the end. Um, and I wonder. I-, I keep pushing my against what you're saying uh, about about them kind of not going for it. Uh, I-, I think they'll go the opposite way, but maybe that's up to Steph, uh, who I thought tonight 
tried to counter um, because he's been shooting the three ball so poorly, getting to the rim a little bit, played a little bit with more with Draymond, which obviously unlocks him off the ball a lot more. But I mean, he didn't look great tonight again. Turn the ball over. Some of the dis- most disgusting turnovers I've ever seen uh, from Steph tonight, just kind of run stopping turnovers. So I just, it just the whole team up and down, Sam. There's really like no, like, do you even have a silver lining out of this? Uh, game i don't really have one so the know. silver lining is we're not going to have to watch these specific 10 to 12 players <laughs> in 10 to 12 games which is the trade deadline um and you can take that however you want you're going to watch something different you're going to get you're going to see uncle mo you can see lester yeah throw it up for a while i don't yeah. know that's, yeah. that's where we're at yeah. let's uh let's pay the bills and get to our special guest All right, we are brought to you by Sleeper. Uh, Hey, look, the game's already going to happen, but but here's what I got for you guys, and here's my thought process. So with Sleeper Daily Fantasy Basketball, you can pick points, rebounds, assists. You pick high. You pick overs. You pick unders. uh, You can get 5X. You can get 100X. Here's what I got for tonight. We got LeBron over 26 and a half that's easy. you're losing that's easy money he's on national tv he's gonna play like you know you know no, what he does no. you know what he does you this know what is, he does he's about to do what steph just did this is about to be his you're making a trade you're rob. making a trade he's about to give you he's about to give you you're making a trade rob game that's uh that's what i'm gonna not assume he's gonna do then with anthony davis i'm gonna go with the under you know why because he had a great last game so easy under on the 45 and a half points rebounds assist and then Shea Gilgis Alexander was actually questionable coming into the game. So I went under on the 31 and a half for him. Um, pretty straightforward stuff. Um, you you bet all three. Um, you get the 5.41x. So you bet $5, win 27. Uh, you use promo code light years. You'll get up to $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See sleepers. Terms are used for details. Currently operation, operational in over 25 states. Check out sleeper today. Oh. Andy Lou, we have a special guest today. Let's go. And it could not come under more miserable circumstances. Well, it's not like his team's any, any, any. Oh, but he's so much more black pilled than us. Great, he, great trade they just made though. Great. Trade. He's he's not pretending there's hope in the season. I've never heard Andrew Sharp say that the Wizards are a Pascal Siakam away from a run. So, uh, the host of the the Goat Greatest of All Talk podcast, Andrew Sharp. How are you doing? Well, that doesn't sound great. Whoa. Might be cooked. Got robot sharp tonight. I'm going to kick you off the stage and re-bring you on. This does not sound good. All right, let's try it again. I he, found we, it. Yeah. We, re- we literally broke him. I got, I got, and plus I got a question for him anyway, so I'm, I'm locked in. Oh, we got, we got, we got, we got takes. We got takes to get off. Guests to get off. We'll try one more time. Uh, Sharp, if you can hear me, check the downward carrot next to the camera and the mic setting to confirm the correct plugins there. We good? Um, can you hear me now? Perfect. There you go. I have no clue what happened there. I'll take full blame as no, the uh, resident playback. Uh, uh, well, I, I'm a professional podcaster now, so I have like a high tech <laughs> microphone that was being uh, rejected by the yeah. Oh, thank I you see. for the sharp tech swag there. It was being rejected <laughs> by playback, so uh, we're going old school. This is a MacBook microphone. Oh, I but see. Interesting. It, it's great to see you guys. It's a, a, a pretty dark night here. I was not anticipating uh, such a grim podcast. Figured that would be a nice, easy uh, win. No uh, jaw on the road against a team of like seventh or eighth men out there in Memphis. But turns out that's sort of what the Warriors are at this point. Team of like eight guys uh, around Steph. It's, it's a dark uh, night every night. It's a dark night every night. It's a very, it's a very dark night. And I was, I was hoping we could talk through. Okay, they they win against the Grizzlies, you know, miserable first half of the season, but can't. Be, I don't even know where you go with this. Right? My, what can they do? Some moves around the margins, maybe. You know, get Mike Dunleavy Jr. Get him in the kitchen, cook something up. I watch a game like that, and I'm like. What the hell do you do at this point? They all look so – I mean, Steph was all right, 
Uh, but the rest of the roster is just so devoid of athleticism. And that's where, like, you watch them against the Grizzlies guys. They're mm -hmm. all kind of fringe players. But outside of Kaminga, who's athletic but can't shoot and is kind of, uh, like, I, I would say for the last couple of weeks was one of the most overrated players in the NBA. Um, wow. <laughs> like, people need to fucking settle down on the Kaminga hype. Um, but, like, beyond that, you just look at the roster and it's like, I actually don't know what they can do at this point. Get rid of get rid of all of it. I, I'm actually more along with you with the Kaminga stuff. I think you sell high as quickly as you can. Uh, I don't yeah, know what, not... what other GMs are in on that, but if you can find a sucker, you take it. You take I it. do wonder. I do wonder if because like I can talk myself into him. There, there's no lying about that. But I can't discount both your perspectives, which is like, are you just getting very excited over the next Jeremy Grant? You know. Right. Which, like you're not going to cry about like it's a fine player, but you're not, you know, it's not a James Wiseman, but it, you, you didn't get Kawhi Leonard either, you know, you know, and so I've looked to the Warriors as like a, a haven as a Wizards fan for the last 10 years. I look to the Warriors to watch people who actually know how to play basketball and like have a high standard when they're on the court. And so there are a lot of teams around the league that would be thrilled to have Kaminga because they like he he puts together like a quarter or two and you're like oh man this guy is awesome but he's not the type of guy based on the last couple of years I would not feel confident at all in like counting on him round after round in a playoff series and, and like counting on him to play like smart basketball high leverage basketball over and over again like he could do it here and there and show you flashes but beyond that I th at this point i'm pretty confident he's not gonna be the guy who just puts it together um on a consistent basis and like that's been the standard if you're trying to win championships with steph the co the comp form is so it's so easy it's just it's just aaron gordon just go somewhere and just be a terrible player as the number one or number two and then just go be a good role player once you realize you're not that good like it's so it's it's just he doesn't know it, but it's fine because I don't expect him to. But it just that's gonna be his role. Like there's no, yeah. there's no, which is fine. I just think sell high on it. But again, like uh, my fear is that like what Sam said, like they they might not do it because the team stinks. Which again, like I haven't, I haven't, I, I can't really argue against that because how can you just trade him when when you can't make a real argument that this team is gonna win anyway? If, if mm -hmm. like here's trade him for someone like so there's that, but. I'm not sitting here and saying he's a blue chip prospect that you gotta you gotta but keep on your roster. Here's you also my gotta pay him soon. Well, so th that's that's the other part of it. But here here's my thing: Could you use him plus like a Chris Paul expiring contract plus whatever other fringe pieces are needed to go get a Pascal Siakam? Probably, based upon Ooh, probably all all reports, it doesn't seem like Toronto's getting anything yeah of value for him. Uh, you could yes. say the same for a DeJounte Murray. Like, and both those guys, I think we'd agree, are fringe all stars. Like, they're not, they're in that if the year goes right, they can make an all star game, but they're no one's confusing him for a franchise player, right? Yeah. I mean, DeJounte's tough. He's going to be like the jewel of the trade deadline. Right. And he's pretty good at a lot of stuff. I mean, he hasn't really locked in on defense for the last four or five years, but he has the Love tools it. to Love play it. defense. So, like, I would feel good if I were trying to but let win me, a let, title. Let me complete the thought here. All right. So, would you, you know, because Kuminga's 21, year three. Mm hmm. If you're if you're if you feel that player gives you a puncher shot at a title, I don't think you really think twice about it because it's not like you're trading Anthony Edwards or Chet Holmgren where you're like this is the franchise, you know. But if you're as far away as the Warriors look right now, what is the value of trading a 21 year old who keeps improving for a 30 year old? You're gonna have to pay. 200 million to keep and you might just look like slightly better version of this with a bunch of old dudes again next year like that's be, the be, because you get two more steps closer versus kuminga who you know won't get you that much closer in the next two years i can guarantee pascal siakun gets you closer than kuminga does to a championship and whether they win it or not is fine you can argue that and i think we all sit here and arguing that they're not which is fine but he gets certainly gets you closer 
That's for damn but, sure. But me. then do you just get yourself stuck in the same hole you are right now, which is a very expensive old team, which doesn't have the assets or the moves to do anything. And that, and that's kind of like, well, the assets I, are the moves to do what in the mm-hmm. future to do what isn't the move just to get Siakam. Cause you're not getting Giannis. Are you waiting for Embiid? Are you waiting for Kuzma? <laughs> are you? <laughs> what are the assets and, and moves for? I assume. That. But but my, my point is, Kuzma's okay, not you, available. You all, the, all right, you Jordan Poole <laughs> and Kuzma. That's two pieces of a foundation in DC. We're straight. Yeah, you over got you here. guys just got Bagley. The, perf- <laughs> yeah. the perfect oh. big three. The perfect big three. Lost to the Pistons today. I mean, the only sure, team you... darker than the Warriors right now. <laughs> Am, I, I don't want to say I'm like completely given up, but like. Do, do you at least see where I'm saying where you're just like at a certain point, you just keep digging yourself into a bigger hole? No, for sure. And that's what I'm saying and why I'm saying like, man, I'm coming on here at a really dark time during <laughs> yeah. this Warriors cycle because it's like, I don't know. I mean, Warriors are what in 10th or 11th place at this point? Like, and you're trading for Pascal Siakam to put you over the top. Like, I agree with you. Kaminga, you put Kaminga on the table it's there's been rumors for like years that Masai has wanted Kaminga in Toronto. I, I could see that being enough to get the deal done. And I, I, so, all right. So that's plausible. What is, what is Siakam actually doing for you? Maybe you're in eighth place or seventh that's place, true. That's but true. if you keep Kaminga to Andy's point, then you have to pay Kaminga and you're like pot committed on a, on Kaminga Island for the next four or five years how does that play out? And uh, like, there is actually no good scenario at this point. I think the reality is Lacob was too invested in the two timelines thing like three years ago. And the time to sell on some of these guys and reinvest in the core was then. Yeah. And now this is just what it looks like when a dynasty starts to crumble. And I, I hate you- delivering that message, but it's just like, the you reality know, of what you can get for any of these guys and, and where the stars at the top of the roster are, like it, it just sort of puts a real ceiling on what's yeah. possible. I remember you hopping on light years after the 2022 title. I'm not saying in June, but like sometime before the season started, Andy and I were just, you know, literally not touching earth, just like convinced, <laughs> convinced Andrew Wiggins had been reformed, going to win oh. for eternity. And you, you told us you didn't you didn't like the Warriors' chances, and I just I just assumed that I did something personal to offend you. So I, um, honestly, but, but I wish not, I wish know, I was history wrong. History played out in your favor, which <laughs> you know what's um, frustrating is that all the guys they have now, like Pods and Tracy Jackson Davis, and even Kaminga Moody, like all these guys are role players who I, I would have killed for them to have a couple years ago back when Clay and Draymond and Steph were at their peak. And, and like if they had had a couple of these guys, I still think they could have won in 2019 after KD went down. Like the, oh, the, oh, oh, yeah, right, right. The, the, they were really scraping the bottom of the barrel with the Bob Myers roster. Shout out, shout out to Mari Spellman, right? Yeah, it was getting pretty wild. And if they had had a few of the – I mean, it's not that the, the players they have are bad. I, I honestly think it's like Clay has taken such a massive step back. Mm. Steph's not quite the same guy on a night to night basis. And then Draymond has been a wall for like 80% of the season. That's the problem. Yeah. I mean, I, you can't really stop uh, father time uh, for, even for Steph. Uh, I think, although, although, although your fans, your listeners or your podcast came at you uh, uh, talking about Steph not being clutch though. That's it. Shout out to the goons, man. Yeah. Shout out to the goons protecting we're, we're, the we're Warriors, even on <laughs> Sharp's podcast, even on the greatest of all time. You yeah. gotta respect them. You gotta love them. They know ball. It's tough. I I wasn't saying Steph's not clutch. It's just that end of the game, final <laughs> shot. I well, might well, feel more comfortable with Clay taking that shot than Steph. Guy. Oh, dollar that's dollar. all I can say. I'm not oh, wow. even uh, This is not Kellerman here. I <laughs> promise you. I promise I'm not going down that that road. I'm going to ask the darkest of dark questions. Can you still win a title with Steph as your best player? Can you, Golden State, with all these like eighth men around him, 
No, that, probably not. No one. Jokic isn't winning. He's probably the best player in the NBA. He's not winning with uh, Pods as his be- second best player, which well might be the case. <laughs> but so I think you could. I think you could. But I I think that's a valid question. And when I was watching this game and they said he's thirty five or thirty six, I was like, holy shit, he's older than I yeah. even realized. Um, yeah. Well, so, and I, I think it. it's, it's a credit to how great he's been that people don't even realize that that's his age because of the way he moves and, and how consistent he's been the last couple of years. But yeah, I mean, I think that that window is starting to close. 36 I, I, in March. I mean, it, he looks, he's played all the games this season. Pretty much. He looks, he looks tired and or old, all of the above right yeah. now. And he, and he still play well. Tonight, Mortal. I just, it's just, he's not like, he's, yeah, he's just not, not Steph and his, his, like every other team, Sam and I sit here and we, we're jealous because KD has Booker and now Beal, who's somehow healthy for the next week, I think. And then LeBron's got AD, so it's like, cool. But those and teams still suck. But it's like, Steph it, doesn't even have those guys. And that and that's kind of the part of it where it's like, I, I get into this like, man, is it over for Steph? And then I'm sitting here going, give him Anthony Davis and see what happens. Well, give, give him, him Siakam and give, Murray is what I'm saying, actually. Well, that, that's But that's kind of like the point I was getting at where I'm just like, is it worth it to give up whatever you have for Siakam or wait until, and I know waiting's not fun, but like, do they actually need to do what the Lakers did for LeBron, which was, you know, Anthony Davis is talented enough to be a number one, but he's not that guy. Right. Yeah. Uh, but he's a great number two, an amazing number two. Uh, do they need to actually sit back and get someone who can actually carry it on a night to night basis. So Steph can, but how do you do that? When, at when this is point? That, when is that happening? I yeah. That, I mean, that, that guy and that's, Stockholm, I think it's best as you're going to get, you're not getting your yeah, Embiid. And God, if they, would... so if they get Siakam, uh, I love how uh, this was such a rock bottom loss that everything is on the table. If they bring in Siakam, do you then have to trade Draymond? Because Siakam's not really a shooter. And the, uh, the, uh, the trade machine deal, says, deal Warriors put a trade machine. Season. Yeah, says, says Chris Paul, Wiggins, Kuminga, Moody, first round picks, and then whatever salaries you need to happen, all that is gone. That, that, that's what I'm saying is going to happen in a couple weeks. Whatever that gets you, gets you. But all that is gone. And you end up, if you can get two players out of that, great. But right. I assume you keep, I mean, I assume you keep Draymond and you have the Steph. Clay, Draymond, go with Siakam and whatever Clay. else you get. I like the Murray. Again, this is all like fantasy stuff. Like I, I understand that. But like if there are other names out there that make sense for you to just push I, all, all in on. And I, all I'm saying is like the names that are available at the deadline move the Warriors from teetering on out of the play-in to teetering on maybe being a six seed. You know? I'll live with yeah. that. That's well, where I'm just kind of like and, – and to I guess to both your points, I don't know that the options get better in the offseason. I just wonder if they go down this path, if the front office doesn't end up with a, we're going to go into the, oh, they really are turning the San Francisco Giants. It just hit me, Andy. They're they're going to enter no the comment. off season being like, <laughs> we're ready to spend. We're going to make a big move. And the next thing you know, they make a fringe middle reliever move. That's anyway. sort of what they've been doing for three years now, honestly. Well, and yeah. it, it's – it's tough because I hear you in terms of like the limits of what's possible, but at the same time, um, you look at this, the the frustration that Steph expressed recently, where he was like doing the same thing over and over again. That's the definition of insanity. That coming from Steph, that's like the version of a five alarm press conference from LeBron, where he like d- takes like. 18 subliminal shots at everyone on the roster and the GM. Like that's as close as Steph's going to get to doing that. But given that that is the message from him, they've got to do something. And if you're going to try to do something, then you might as well really shake it up. I I am most curious as to whether there's still loyalty to Draymond within the building at this point, given the way the last month or two has played out. Sharp and I are on the same. I've been, I've been I'm more worried. One. I've been I'm more worried one. about Clay, honestly. Ooh. Well, I think Clay, they would trade Clay. I don't know that he has any value. Expiring? I think Clay's Clay about to have a very humbling offseason, is the way I'm yeah. reading it. Uh, because they didn't, they offered him two years, 24 a year, 
<laughs> Sam sources. That's disgusting. <laughs> His play he, is disgusting. He will, he will not yeah, get 24 is <laughs> really, really good for Clay. So I don't know. I don't know what exactly we're laughing I at. I mean, I mean, he might be on a Westbrook like five <laughs> mil a year. Yeah, that's deal the yeah. Westbrook one in, in a cool. year. And that's the um yeah, I don't I don't know where they go. So maybe maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe trade for Siakam. You don't have to worry about paying dudes anyway. So you don't get, Clay can get the mid-level. I hey, look, man, this is all I don't. I mean, the guy's made so much money. Who cares? I get, I get to laugh. Come on now. No, um, and, well, no, and and for me, I'm I'm like I hate it because I love Clay, right. and so I don't like to put him in this like ultra washed category. But you watch some of his defensive possessions, watch some of the offense. Like first half against the Bulls, like three or four days ago when they were losing, and Clay had just like a straight up air ball. I was just like, holy crap, how did we get here? What is happening? And they put it together in the second half, so it was fine. But there's just been a lot of that with Clay. So that, you're watching Warriors Bulls on like a Friday night. That was, I was a Friday night game. I was watching first of all, I'm a parent now, Andy. So I'm yeah, just hanging yeah. out on Friday night watching <laughs> oh Kobe God. White. Okay. But okay. um but hey, UNC hey, guy. Hey, oh, UNC guy. I guess. Yes, okay, exactly. Okay. He went off, so I had to I had to partake. Uh, but then I got to watch the Warriors storm back, and and it looked like maybe they were turning the corner. Now here we are again. After- All I'm gonna say is enjoy because I found out a couple months ago they get to an age where they they just say like I don't give a fuck what, if it's your work. I'm controlling the remote. And, <laughs> and so now now I'm just now I'm just watching some 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 lady yell you know sing wheels on the bus as i'm watching the warriors lose on my phone mm. wow. it's, it's, maybe wow. maybe that's why i'm so dark maybe wow. that's yeah. why I'm so dark. <laughs> just living the dream here on a federal holiday um yeah well oh. one other while we're in ultra dark territory mm-hmm. how how willing are you to watch this play out if it's not working with steph for the next year or two like is there any part of you that's like let's just burn it all down i can't I, it, so i see what you're, you're asking is it time to pull the joe montana and let it's hard Steph, there's a I, steve young that's, I, well yeah there's, there's no steve young. um i mean i want him to retire with the warriors i just, I, I feel the same way about clay too where i'm like if clay in any other uniform no, clay, would be blast clay clay can do the paul pierce uh like four uniforms in two years deal. I'm okay with yeah. that. And I don't mean that negatively, but like Steph is the only one I care about having the one, one Jersey career. He's the only Tim Duncan, Dirk Nowitzki, Kobe Bryant. Like it's, and I think it matters for the Warriors. Like, it I don't know if, him. I don't know if the Laker, I don't know if the Lakers will be able to pull it off post Steph, but like in terms of like building that brand that you're, one of the five franchises who matters and has international allure. Mm-hmm. You have to have a, you have to have like your legend retire, you know, like just think of all the other great teams. They have like the Lakers. It goes without saying with like Kobe magic and, you know, like uh, sure. Jerry West and, and, and those guys. Yeah. And you know, the, you don't want to go down that path where like Steph goes to another team. I'd rather watch him. Yeah, I guess I guess I, I I've talked to myself. You know, t- sorry, Kuminga. If Steph wants Siakam, That's I'm cool I'm with saying. it. You know, <laughs> like, but it's just kind of like I'm saying you might as well lose in the second round every season. I don't. I I truly I don't care. Just, yeah, you ha- just get. They're these. never gonna have another one franchise like change the game of basketball and like. Dude, the Make NBA th- might not have one of those guys. Again. Right, right. So, right. like that, I I want him to stay. I just the only reason I ask is because like the on goat, we've gotten a couple emails from Warriors fans mm-hmm. who I'm sure are light years goons themselves, who have written in after some of these losses and been like, you know what, I've hit my breaking point. I'm set. Let's honestly just trade everybody and rebuild from here, which. Uh, it, had you asked me like two months ago, I would have been like, that's inconceivable. There's no way any Warriors fan is going to say that halfway into the season. But some of the losses and, and the lack of realistic options as you move forward um, has has forced me to do a double take at, at some of those emails. I, like, I eh, can it's un- not the craziest sentiment. I can understand the sentiment because in your mind, 
you're you getting want the best for Steph too. And in your mind, you're like, we're going to get Wembenyama and start a rebuild. <laughs> but have you looked at the draft board? You know, like yeah. I promise you, you're more likely to get a Ron Holland and he's not good. You know, like it's just one of those things where it's, well, and it's like if you're trading um, Dre and 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 Clay, you're not right. getting a bunch of lottery picks. You're getting right. like I don't know. I, at this point, I really don't know what the market is for for even Draymond. I'm sure teams are going to want Draymond, but yeah, what's LA want? What's, I, I I think I think uh, those guys are all going to be gone. Not not Dre and Clay though, Sharp. I, I think that's those are the guys that I think Steph will. Uh, I think Steph would rather lose with them than uh, than than. Than gamble Makes sense. On, on anything else, which is yeah, exactly. But um, those other guys, I think they're goodbye. Um, so and, and, uh, next season, Draymond, Clay, Steve Kerr, are they part of the organization at that point? Ooh, I'm on. Next I'm on October. Record. I'm Ooh. on record saying all four will not be back. Agree. I don't know. All which... four will not be back. Or well. That's I'm I saying three. I'm one, also going to include of, Wiggins. Okay. Wiggins is not core. I'm sorry. Uh, well, but, but of those four, I would say none of those four are coming back next year. Whoa, time. none of those four. Oh, okay. I'm not going there. Woo. I'm saying I'm saying one of at least one, potentially two, are getting shooken up. And I don't know which direction they go, but it's it's pretty clear, like new voice. Or like removing a player who the coach is loyal, like something's getting shaken up. I think I think Kerr's gone. I think uh, Wiggins is gone in two weeks. I think Clay. <laughs> I, I, no, I dead serious. I just, I'm, but Draymond, I think stays. I think Steph loves him too much. Um, and nobody nobody wants to deal with this shit. I mean, the next time he punches someone and he's done for the season, nobody's dealing with that. And then I think Clay, I think Clay will be back. I mean, that 224 is kind of gross, but yeah, I think he'll end up. But I think he does stay. I think those two guys stay, but yeah, Steve's gone, and I think Wiggins is dead. I mean, he's uh, dead. I think Clay's I think there's a very good chance Clay's gone. Um, Did they they offered him 24 a year, right? So it was 248. Correct. Yeah, that was. Well, I thought it was. That I thought was it was for... two, 12 a year, Sam. Oh, you're saying twenty four. No, it's, it's a year. twenty four. Uh, this was Shams that's who put more. that out there. So like, we can always question. Twenty four is really good. Yeah, that's a good <laughs> deal. That's not a bad. Will that offer essentially still be offer there? Him, it's an open question. They essentially <laughs> offered him the same annual that they're giving Wiggins and uh, Draymond, and we can like we can argue over like two percent here or there, but like they're they offered him the same thing, but only two years. It yeah. seems like he wanted more years, which tends to be the sticking point. But, you know, I, I think the Warriors are actually probably too. happy he didn't take that. So, <laughs> yeah, seriously. Well, yeah. And it seems like Clay, and I don't blame him for feeling like he's given a lot to the organization and is entitled to be taken care of at this point. Um, but it seems like his expectations going into this next contract are just like wildly different than the teams. Yeah. And so there could be just pride factoring into the decisions that are made on, on his end. Yeah. Um, so he, he's I, to me the most certain to be on a different team next year. And then the other three Wiggins, I think is the only one who has like any sort of trade value if they try to move him. Um, but that's, really? declining by the wow. game <laughs> um, i feel like i feel like they have to pay someone to take him right now and i don't and yeah, he actually maybe. did not play he didn't play terrible tonight but uh well uh, i mean compared, he... compared to draymond and clay look clay that's what i'm saying <laughs> i can see <laughs> a team out there being like look andrew wiggins he's still young we've seen him do it on the biggest stage Yes, the last year or two, that's been a step back, and it's been sort of a, a relapse into the Wolves Wiggins we saw. But maybe he could still be that championship caliber two way wing we need. Whereas, like the case you're making for Draymond like is like, I like look, it. I'm LeBron James. Draymond's fun <laughs> to party with. Let's trade for him. No, I, I'll give you like, that. I'll, I'll go like, Kyrie. No, no, no. I'll this is there. a this is a good thing, Char. This is you sell this to someone else so that the Warriors can get off. <laughs> what, you what you just said needs to be sold. I hope Dunleavy is listening. I'm not I saying, saying I believe it. it. <laughs> and I don't think I, they believe I'm, it. All I'm saying is I still trust Draymond in a playoff game, and I've watched. 
400 games of Minnesota Wiggins and maybe 85 of yeah. playoff of like the oh he's good so but yeah. I, I yeah I, well no and I, and honestly I think it, it, the the trade value conversation probably Draymond is gonna somebody some contender is gonna be willing to give it up for give give up oh, something it's, it's, meaningful for Draymond it's Dallas Jason yeah. Kidd Jason Kidd's telling Mark Cuban I can handle him. That's like, I don't even need to sell you on that. You know, that conversation has gone on, but this uh, is, and, this is where you look at the realistic options and it's like, you're not might really, <laughs> you're not resetting or, 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 or kind of reloading with whatever you're getting back for clay Draymond and Wiggins at this point. Yeah. Uh, Jalen Hardy and, uh, TJD is not, yeah, yeah. or uh, sorry, Tim Hardaway Jr. is not, not, not putting the Warriors back. Yeah, I agree. Well, um, I just remember asking our, our buddy Kirk, the Mavs blogger, if he would give up Derek Lively for Draymond. And he was like, absolutely not. Are you kidding me? Which, well, Luke, Luke is not that old. The way they can, they can, oh, I, I, yeah, I, I can, yeah, right. I can respect the perspective because I couldn't do it if I was a Dallas guy. Either. Well, if, if Luca was like, Last 30 year, thir- yeah. yeah, exactly. Right. If Luca was like 31 and then he kind of like has never won a championship and, and, and this is kind of the move to put him over the top and Derek Lively's 19, I can see it. But I mean, Luca's like, Luca's not even a playoff player yet. Like he's still fat and doesn't play defense. Like, so it's not like, they're not trying to win a championship. So it's like, it's not, he's not serious yet. I'm sure though. This is not the right timing for him, uh, for, for them. But would you guys trade Draymond for Gigi Jackson and Vince Williams Jr.? <laughs> no, just by the way, Draymond <laughs> is putting an elite rant on. I'm gonna play this real quick for you, Sharp. Oh, great. We're gonna call it. We're calling it a day. Okay. Okay. After this. I'll leave it there. I think we leave it there. You just say they're all concerning. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I would say lack of pride coupled with lack of athleticism. Those are the two issues. And I, I think his point is uh, the athletes don't actually play like their athletes do, which is uh, well. Maybe said, Dray- yeah. maybe Draymond's best value was figuring out how to light a fire under Wiggins' ass to like play. Like the athlete he is, I don't know. We see now. Now I'm back into drinking my Draymond Kool Aid. He's gonna he's gonna get them going. Gonna do his Draymond thing uh, and, until he punches someone in ten to. Yeah, my, here here's my pushback, Draymond. You played five games a season and you were unserious. And <laughs> what the fuck are we doing? What is this? You're yeah. just gonna come back game one and just act like you own the locker room? Nobody listens to you in the locker. What are we doing here? You punched the guy last year. You ruined the season. You show up this season. You play good, then don't show up for half the season because you're busy punching people, and now you're going to act like the leader. What, what the fuck? See, this is why this team is 18 and 22. This is why. What, Draymond press conferences? They're, this, they're just not – like nobody's locked in to the actual goal, right? Nobody yeah. actually wants to win. Dr- Draymond can deliver a good press conference and sound like a leader, but then he goes yep. in the locker room and punches dudes in the face. Exactly. So it's like, <laughs> what, what is it like, – like? you know what I'm saying? Like what does it exactly. really matter? Well, same, uh, same with was, Wiggins, same with like all the way down the line. This is not just Draymond. I'm just making the point because whoever was ridiculous. announcing on TNT when Draymond entered the game for the first time, they said his fire can heat up a building or burn it all down. <laughs> hey, and I was good. like, well wow. said, let's put that on a hall of fame plaque for my wow. guy. <laughs> wow. I'll love him forever. He the, thought the, about, he thought about that one for a while. <laughs> yeah. I can, I can just, <laughs> I can respect the craft. I had that scripted on the way in. Uh, well, listen, it's great to see you guys. I hope that the next time we podcast about Steph Curry, the conversation will be less depressing than this has been. But, you know, maybe Siakam and DeJounte are the, the answer. Yes. 
Eastern Conference guys, your guys, let's go. <laughs> That's right. Eastern Conference guys. What Always been a big Siakam believer, you know? <laughs> let's see what he can do out there. Uh, appreciate you, Appreciate you, Sharp. You, Sharp. All right. How see you guys. Going? All right, thanks, man. Uh, before, before, Sam, before we get to the uh, to the goons and everyone else, the This Light Years podcast is brought to you by our guy Steph Curry, uh, Under Armour. Steph Curry makes you believe you can do anything, and the Curry Elevens are specifically designed with ultimate balance grip and stability to allow everyone to do their thing. New generations of ball players are coming up and showing the basketball world that the old rules do not apply. The future is exciting, fast, positive, and hungry. This NBA season. Rock with your favorite player and rep his shoes on and off the court. Curry 11s are perfect for both the committed and casual ballers. UA Warp Tech makes the shoe feel like it was designed for your feet, locked in no matter what you do on the court. Stop in your tracks with dual density UA flow, uh, cushioning and traction, and emergency brake you don't even notice. Steph's 11th signature shoe steps into the second decade of a sneaker career, pulling colorway inspiration from the wonders of a positive and modernized future on and off the court. Take these kicks with you when you leave the scrimmage. Rep UA wherever you go. So do your thing. Change the game. The Curry 11 Future Curry is available now at currybrand.com. Individuals make up a team, and individually our defense sucks, so it's better our team do. When you lose the ball, uh, the full court is more for you, I think, personally. Yeah, um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what y'all think this is. Oh, Draymond. I mean... I want to believe in what he's selling, but nothing you said five minutes ago was inaccurate, which is you you're capable of being the leader, but if you don't do leadership things to make your teammates follow you, it's just, you're just talking. You're just talking, you know, well, that's a good way to put it. Just talking, just talking. This team is rough. I, I like sharp coming on and, and, and pulling back some of the threads. He, uh, he talked about with with Clay and Draymond. I think me and you don't talk about that a lot, but you listen to something like this from Draymond. I do think like they do need him, and that's kind of been the downfall of this team, right? The guys that they need are the ones that are letting them down. Um, Draymond mm-hmm. and, and Clay <laughs> comments are so good tonight. Bro's just yeah. yapping, just yapping. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. All right, to the goons. Tash, y'all, what's up? Let me see. Uh, all how's our, my how's our bet teams. doing? How's our bet doing? Uh, so who's do we consider Hicks actually quality? <laughs> no, 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 no. Forty. The, all no. right, the, <laughs> the rules. All right, so we're the rules clear. A hundred million dollar contract. We're not counting. Uh, Jung Ho Lee, right, or right, right, the right. Warriors trade. For someone who makes twenty million, like substantial, okay, basically, okay. The bet is still on, Tashion, sir. Thank you. Yep, it is still on. No right. worries. Yep. There may basically... be no. Win- there may be no winners. That's a that's a real possibility. <laughs> we, are, we are all losers. <laughs> hey, if Farhan and Mike don't leave, you don't do something. It just means that I get to see you guys suffer. That so I'll take it. <laughs> if no, if no, if nobody wins, we both wear the jerseys. That's that's really we yep. Add, we yep. add a qualifier to the bet. Uh, why is it, why is uh, so yeah. sales up? <laughs> but yeah, but other than that, it's like I'm annoyed with like FedEx at this point because they're like delaying my shit for like the past seven days. And I'm like, dog, it's like all my sports teams are garbage. It's like everyone complaining about playing Joku with wings. And it's like, and we're seeing like minus eight net ratings. And I'm like, dog, can't we just get to the plot and just like trade everyone to the point and just like, 
just be miserable with each other and ride off to the sunset at this point because God, this is just pathetic. Yeah. It's not fun, my man. It's not all not your sports good. team. Not all. You're a Niners fan, right? No, I'm not a Niners fan. I already said this before. It's like, uh, I used to be a Raiders fan, but it's oops, like they're oops. they're that's a toxic they're a toxic relationship. So it's like I don't claim them anymore. So I just like hate watch the 49ers and I just suffering because you guys are pretty much got a streamlined success to like the Super Bowl, and then I'll have to hope for like Lamar Jackson to just not fumble the bag at yeah, this point. Yeah, like, yeah, God, yeah. All please. right, fair enough. I, my bad. That's my bad. That's my bad. I uh, I said it to a friend of mine. By the way, Tasha, I appreciate you as always, man. Um, and Andy, I think you might have you might have put it out into the ether, but I do think there's a realistic chance we're gonna get back to Chiefs Niners yeah. Super Bowl. Uh, really, right? Really, I, I just I'm I'm. The Ravens' defense is ridiculous, but the Patriots – or, sorry, the Chiefs feel like the Patriots to me where I'm sitting here and I'm going, he doesn't have a lot of weapons. Kelsey looks washed, but how many years in a row did Gronk look washed? And then in the playoffs, he turned yeah. up. Yeah. Uh, and by far the best Chiefs defense I've seen in the entire Yeah. Run. So it's one of those where it's like if the defense is real – Kelsey is somewhat functional. Mahomes is probably good enough to just manage the game and make the mm. plays he needs to make. They're dangerous. They're dangerous. Uh, I feel like not enough people have talked about the Chiefs. That's I, I came to yeah, me this they week. They did a really shitty uh, regular season. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's, it just is what it is. You know, they, they looked like it was like, all right, not their year. They need to regroup a little bit. But I'm just sitting here. I'm looking at the rest of the teams. Know. I'm not impressed. I mean, yeah. I think the end, like I'll be, I'll be pretty disappointed if the Niners lose to anyone in the NFC. It's, it's, he's a joke. It's, it's, okay. a joke. It's, it's yeah. Like shout out Detroit. That was, that was cool last night, but like they're not good. Uh, and then the AFC, I'm just sitting here. I'm going. It's in play. Are the Ravens like that? Are we sure? Has Lamar won? Like we got to see it from the Lamar defense. Like the defense is like that, but. But then it's Mahomes. Like he's he's. If you put Mahomes in a close game, if for some reason that's a 17-20 game, right? Chiefs right. Ravens in the fourth quarter. Like I don't know. It doesn't matter what defense you have. Sometimes if if it's Mahomes on the other side. So yeah, I, I, <clears throat> I watched them against the Dolphins, and I know the Dolphins are a joke in a cold weather team. But I was just like, oh, this Chiefs Chiefs team is kind of might be might be good for the Niners though if they play the Chiefs. Probably a better matchup. But anyway, all right. We Archie, got? what's up, man? Hey, it's been a while. Hey, it's been a while. What's up, guys? It's been a while. Um, I'll be quick. You guys pretty much touch everything. So um, I just think, like, the team is very lethargic just to kind of watch. Um, I'm a big international football fan or soccer, as they say in America. Uh, FC Barcelona is my team. So watching Messi towards the end of his run there, a lot of beautiful ball that he was doing, you know, but you looked at the team and you're like, who the hell is this and why are they making this amount of money and not really producing? And I see a lot of that, you know, particularly with the Warriors. Uh, the only thing I'd say for Kaminga and Moody, I'm actually out on trading them um, just because I just don't feel good about any of the actual core that we really have anymore. Um, but, you know, we'll see what happens at the trade deadline and then I'll re re reassess there. I do think if they do make any trades, though, Chris Paul Wiggins are the ones to make, not necessarily to save the season, but to then make more moves going into uh, the off season to really prepare for this year. This year is a wash. Um, lastly, I'm from Baltimore, so I'll see you guys in the Super Bowl this year. <laughs> <laughs> oh, appreciate you, you, Archie. Appreciate you. Hope so. Hope hope we do. Oh, actually, I don't know. I don't know if I want to see the Niners and Ravens. Um, Harbaugh, Harbaugh. Harbaugh's a little scary. Yeah, I, uh, I've seen the Niners, and, but then again, I've seen the Niners and Chiefs. We, anyway, whatever. Um, history <laughs> doesn't history doesn't play well either way. <laughs> no, no, it does not. It's gonna be a, look, man. The NFC might be might be terrible, but the, whoever the Niners play in the Super Bowl, if they get there, it's gonna be a, a, a war zone. I do, I think. Look, we talked about it with Sharp and Archie brought it up. I will be shocked if uh, CP three. And Wiggins are on the roster after the yeah. trade deadline. Yeah. I just think it's a question of which direction they go. Yeah. You know, are they offloading are they gonna, the contract? Yeah. Are they are they offloading for 
assets to make a future move or are they using them to go in? Uh, I think it could go either way. Nights like tonight, I feel very pessimistic they're going. You're, you're, you're right. You are right, Nights like tonight. And then, honestly, like, even if they win tonight, I guess, I mean, whatever. If win, well, if they won tonight, they, they just need to win games like tonight. That's yeah, the end they, of it. That's, yeah, that's, that's it. That's it. Uh, Ebony, what's up? You know, it's at, the, it's at the point where when you're watching these games, you have to be doing something else. Or at the end of it, you know you've wasted your time. Like, if you're not doing multiple things, like they're just so bad that you can't just sit like and I, watch and enjoy like it. Like I watched them, I watched them lose, but I got a bunch of work done for tomorrow, so I'm feeling good. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So you don't feel like complete shit at the end of the game, at the yeah. end of like three hours worth of like terrible basketball. And might I add, Draymond's comments in that presser. I could almost promise you they're like directed at Wiggins. Like the dude doesn't like, he's not trying. And it's like, you're the most athletic dude on the team. That's a veteran. And all you have to do is grab a rebound. And like, for some reason now he can't even like catch a pass. It's, it's really sad, man. But um, I guess like, my only question is if Steph was to get traded, which I nah, 100% that? doubt he would, where does he go? I mean, he's not going to the Lakers. Okay, I'll play does the he game. go does he go bump the the Spurs into like the playoffs? <laughs> mm-hmm. Steph or Jacob Gilliard. Um, where does he go? Not Charlotte because they're terrible. I think he still wants to win a title. He's gonna do the Miami. Game. Oh, that's so good. That's that how good. much good. The, the funniest outcome because, like, I understand why Dame wanted to go to Miami. Like, I get that. Like on paper, the fit is like Jimmy Bam. They're kind of warriorsy. They just need the dude who can fucking score the ball a little bit. Him taking I mean, Dame. the Warriors Dame. would ask for Hawkins in return. <laughs> I, I guess hope- then we have a future after that, right? Oh, Hawkes, Hawkes and Pods. It's the dream team. Yeah. And I can't, I, I've entertained this too much. I can't do this. I mean, appreciate you. <laughs> Y'all appreciate you calling. Have a great evening. Well, I want to enter- entertain some more. Steph on the heat. I mean, oh, oh, oh we're not doing this, brother. We're it's not champ- doing this. That's a championship. Okay. Next one. Next we're getting, one. we're getting, we're getting Lau up here. The next, yeah. the next Draymond. Bam. Woo. Her- hero. Uh, kind of like a Jordan Poole. All right. A hey, Lau. A hey, Lau is coming on. Oh. Hey. What's up, brother? Where you at? Yeah, oh, I'm in like Hong York? Kong right now. Hong Kong, Hong Kong. Nice. okay. Same. I'm in Hong Kong right now, but uh, wow. time difference here. So uh, I watch the games in the morning, but I, uh, like the previous caller said, man, you got to do something else while you watch these games because you know at the end it's just absolute bullshit. So, uh, <laughs> you know, I worked out this morning. I watched a little bit of it, watched a little bit of the Bills game, and I'm just realizing, man, this season's kind of a wash, man. It's like you, pl- it's like you play Kuminga too – too much he does too well his trade value kind of goes up but then what are we gonna get man so i don't know man uh i don't know this is kind of a fucked up season huh yeah, yeah. chat like, chat saying the warriors are so bad lao had to leave the country can you confirm bro i'm definitely dude it's so bad man like I don't even see any Steph Curry jerseys out here anymore. Yeah, oh, stop like, it. Oh, now, you're just, now, you're just, oh. now you're just lying for the, the stream. Oh, no. Well, there is an Under Armour store right here. And uh, inside, they're selling the Currys, but there's no kids in there, man. <laughs> Golly. Oh, my God. <laughs> so over. So, hey, I hope jo- Joe Lacob is watching this, man. Say, hey, Joe, man, you didn't pay the – you didn't pay the international NBA money, man. What's going on? <laughs> Joe. But it's crazy, man. The tough watch this season. I feel like this whole NBA season, we're just hate watching everything, right? We're just we're just watching other teams, watching them wanting to fail instead of like seeing our team yeah. want to win. So it's like, yeah, fuck. That's a good point. Yeah. like the best takeaway from this season is even though we suck, the Lakers are not too far behind. So yeah. it's like, oh yeah, yeah. it's kind of so sad. We're good. We're good. Kind of sad to watch basketball like that. You know, it's like I'm, no, I'm over here. The- you know. That's the Chris Cohen Laker era, man. I mean, uh, Chris Cohen Warriors era, man. It's like you know what? We're bad, but 
as long as the Lakers are worse or just as bad, hey, it's a successful season, man. It's bad. It's bad. It's, it's bad, bad, man. We, what are we guys up to? Uh, what are we guys up to the rest of the week, man? I miss you guys. A few more, a few more hate watches this week. <laughs> we got you. Know, you, you know it's bad. You know it's bad when people are counting down the days to the trade deadline, and you know. Bro, we've been we've been we've been doing that since Thanksgiving. <laughs> it's you it's know the like... bottom, the bottom of our hearts. We know nothing's gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna get a crazy trade where it's like Andrew Wiggins tra- traded for two second round picks. We're gonna get off Chris Paul for like. A second round pick, and then the rest of the season, we're riding Pods, Moody. We're gonna ride these guys, and then I don't. Gonna I don't have an have in me to hear. Problems. I don't have an in me to hear Fitz sell Pods like the way he used to sell Monte, the way he used to sell all the. Oh, well, I, I gotta let I, you go. Let me go. Get some man. good. Get some good. Get some good dim sum for me, brother. Yes, have fun. Send, send pic. That sounds good. Send some pictures. Wow, Hong Kong That's... sounds nice right now. Dude, dim sum sounds really nice. Right now. <laughs> um, does, does, I'm I'm hungry, so let's power through these calls. All right, let's go. Let's go. Oh, you didn't eat dinner yet? I guess it's not even seven. Jeez. We're, we're one of those one of those days where we're streaming, but like at an awkward meal time. Yeah. Feels and like then we start, and I'm like, I'm hungry. Damn it. <laughs> What's up, man? New caller, Black Hammer. There we go. Dude's at the gym. Can you guys hear What's me? up, man? Hey, we yeah, go. we can hear you. Yes, yeah, so I was at the game. Oh. And, uh, it was, it was, no? It was no? Yeah, I, I, I risked my life <laughs> to watch that. And uh, I just, and I'm never, I, I just wanted to say, I, I was never one of those people to, like, get on Steve Kerr as much as, you know, everybody else in the fan base. Sure. But, Playing all these guards in this lineup, in these lineups, having Kev, Kevon play with Dario, it's just like I don't know what he's seeing. Like it, 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 it's, it's too slow. They can't keep up any, with anybody on the defensive side. I mean, it's just it's really it's just tough to watch. Yeah, so the Kevon and Sarge lineup when you're playing against Jaron Jackson and Xavier Tillman, who just stands in the perimeter and shoots threes. Is insane. Yeah. All right. Appreciate you. He's at the game. Yeah. Appreciate you, man. Have a good one. Negative degree weather. Look at that. Love when people yeah. call in from away games. I do too. Gives me it's gives great me times. Money. Kojo tonight. Kojo lineups with pods. That's well, what he's talking about. Gross. Will, what's up, my man? What's up, Will? Oh, what's up, guys? Hey, it's like Ebony said earlier. You gotta be, you gotta be <laughs> shit while you're watching while you're watching games at this point. Okay. You know, I'm over here. I'm watching the this Bucks Eagles game while simultaneously watching the Emmys, and, and then out of the corner of my oh, eye, I'm watching up? this uh this game. This game was just ridiculous. Like, I mean, they had no one. Like, we lost to a bunch of nobodies. <laughs> like, that's that's what's crazy. To be, yeah. I mean, I guess Luke Kennard's not a nobody, but um, the point but, stands. The point stands. <laughs> I just think that it, it's time to just blow this up, man. I, I like like the reports that have been coming out over the past week or so. Everybody except Steph can go, and I will not allow you guys. I will not allow this slander of Steph to continue to like just be in the Twitter space because people saying that like, oh, he's starting to look washed and all that kind of stuff. I'm like, the dude's 35 going on 36. And he's carried this team for most of the season. And you're asking him to continue to do this with no real consistent second option. And so I I just think it's time to offload these contracts. It's time to just keep Steph and see what you can get for Wiggins and CP3 and all that and just go from there. I don't think that's a, any true two trades or whatever are going to save the season. But, yeah, maybe we sneak into the playoffs. Um, but I, I don't know. I just think it's time for a restart, you know? I agree. Appreciate it, Will. Yeah. No, I mean, it's something has to happen. Watching the Emmys and the football game and on playback, that's, mm-hmm. you know. I just watched Jalen Hurts high step into a sack, so. 
you were right on Jalen Hurts. You know, like, you know, we got to go back sometimes. And I'm over here gassing up Jalen Hurts. Looks terrible. Maybe it's injury. All, maybe it's all quarterbacks overrated, except for Mahomes. <laughs> except except for Mahomes. Mahomes, yeah. Mahomes is the one. My buddy Gio. says the exact same thing. Gio, let's What's go. Up? What's up, guys? Everyone What's else is some player. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Honestly, my thing is with Yusuf. Like, who are they gonna get this summer? Like, like why wait till the summer? Like, who is out there going for assets to trade for? Like, that makes no sense to me. Like, you make a trade, you you move Moody and Jacob because like they because you're not because they're not gonna pay them this summer anyways, right? So you move them because sure. they're expensive. And get Siakam. Like, cause like why wait till the summer to get like a national player like, to help you? Like, what's the point? Like, who's out there? And that's my thing. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's it's a fair point, Gio. Like, what are they? You hold on to Kuminga because you think you can do better, and you want to see what happens. And I, I don't see it happening. This might be the best you can do. You know, might just need to go that way. Pretty good too. I think Siakam. Pretty good. Pretty good. Solid. Um, I'll take it. All right. Should we just end it here? This is enough. This is enough for tonight. Everyone. Much love.